But I tell myself about a particular event that will make me feel good or bad, happy or sad, and I will act accordingly. So my actions are my own responsibility. My emotions are my own doing. Okay? So nobody, nobody and nothing can make me feel good or bad, happy or sad. Because two people in the same situation think differently, act differently, and everything's different. Okay? You in a in a different in a different circumstance, a different frame of mind, you have you think differently and you feel differently and you act differently. Which goes to show that an event or a person cannot make you feel good or bad, happy or sad. Okay? So our actions, our, our emotions are our choices. Pain is a fact of life. Pain is part of life. You know, we grow old, we cannot you know, we have physical pain, you cannot do the things that you did when you were 20 years old. That's part of life. So life breaks us physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. It breaks us as pain. But misery is a choice. Suffering is a choice. <coughs> so if I feel miserable or if I'm suffering, it's a choice. Okay? Now, and I also said the last time, pain that is not resisted always purifies and enlightens us. Pain that is resisted becomes suffering. Okay? So when I resist pain, either physical, emotional, or spiritual pain, I resist it, I suffer. And when I suffer, then I'm like an animal that is trapped, you know, and like put against the wall. So what's the only thing the animal can do when it's trapped? Lash out, attack. And so then we then we become like little like little animals because we've been put against the wall. But I don't have to be put against the wall. So I can act rationally. Okay? So pain that is resistant becomes suffering. Pain that is not resistant always purifies and enlightens. Like Mahatma Gandhi, you heard of Mahatma Gandhi, right? He led this great like uh, a whole revolt against the British. And his whole revolt was non-violence. And non, it was not only non-violence, by the way. What he called his, uh, his movement was Satyagraha. Satyagraha is Satya, is that truth and the essence. And what is the essence of life? The essence is like I am divine and the divine is in everything. So whatever happens to one of us affects the rest of us. So we are, we are interconnected. Okay? So we are interconnected. So therefore, when the British kind of attacked him, they beat him up. What he said was, you can break my body, but you cannot touch my spirit. So who was more powerful? Was the British more powerful or was he more powerful? Ultimately, he <coughs> won. You know? And like what happens is, a lot of the times, a lot of the times, reaction is a sign of weakness. Reaction comes from weakness. Like when Jesus said, if somebody slaps you in the right cheek, like give him the left, that was not weakness. You know you can strike back, but you still offer the left for a greater cause, for a greater, okay? So that is, that is Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi's whole thing was, you know, ultimately, I don't know whether you saw the movie Gandhi, but he's with this Protestant minister, you know, and, of course, at that time, like, brown people or non-white people couldn't walk on the pavement. They had to kind of go, and so there were these, like, young kids who started calling him names. And the white minister, the priest, he began saying, let's take another road. He says, why? Doesn't your gospel, doesn't your Jesus say, face the enemy? Why are you afraid? You know, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who persecute you, not because you're weak, but because you're strong. Strength comes from that part of our way of relating. So he goes through, and they go and right into his face. He doesn't, he doesn't cow down. They could have beaten him up, they did not. You know, because the mother intervenes right at that time, you know, that scene, and they move it, they move them, they, they kind of move away. And uh, and so the minister says, Oh, we got lucky today. He says, I thought you believed in God <clears throat> and not in good luck and bad luck. You know, in our relationship with God, no one can touch us. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie Papillon. Anybody? 
Papillon. 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 Yes, yes, yes. So it is the French is Papillon. Papillon. Okay, yes. Did you see that movie? Long ago. Long ago. But it's a movie worth seeing because that guy, they imprison him, they break every bone in his body, they put him like in solitary confinement. You know, there's one scene I'll never forget. You know, he's got to show him his face through a little window. You know, the guard says, show your face, and he goes there. And he puts the thing, the stick right on his thing. And the guy, he almost laughs at the guard and he says, you can break my body, you cannot touch my spirit. My spirit is free. Okay, and then he escapes. Like, you know, he goes and he's, he finds his own freedom. Because he's a bu papillon in French, means butterfly. And butterflies can sit on thorns of life and not be affected by thorns, sit on the roses of life and not be affected even by the rose. But it makes the palms and the roses look more beautiful. Okay? Alright, now that you've got your papers, so we finished A, B, C. And A is neither good or bad, happy or sad. What I tell myself about A makes me feel and act. So if I want to change my feelings and my behavior and my action, I've got to change my way of perceiving life and my being. But now there is the D. What is D? D stands for I need to discriminate between rational and irrational okay supposing I say um, you know he criticized me rudely in public is that a rational statement or an irrational statement rational are you are you with me okay that is a rational <coughs> objective true statement that he criticized me rudely in public what is irrational the irrational is, you know, he must be stupid, he must be evil, or I must be stupid and I must be good for nothing, or I wonder what everybody else is saying about me, which is so now everybody's going to think badly about me. All these other statements that I've just said are not rational, they're irrational. Got it? So we normally, we have a rational statement and then we twist it with an irrational one that makes us feel good or bad. The irrational will always make us feel bad and negative and then we act negatively. So there is a rational statement that is objective and then there is the irrational one. So I need to, I need to separate, to dis discriminate between the rational one and the irrational one. Okay, first, then I need to, um, and then I need to debate the irrational one. So I need to kind of, because I don't want to be an irrational being, right? I want to act rationally, and I want to act effectively, and I want to be able to do things so that I grow healthily, and I don't lose my inner peace and my inner freedom. So, what are the five principles for, uh, for rational thinking? You've got that on your sheets. The five principles are first, is my thinking objective? Is it true? Okay, first. The second, I don't know what you have there, but does it get me my goal? Is that the second one? Okay, does it protect my life? Does it protect my life? Okay, we'll go through those. I'll just go. The third is, does it get me my goal? The fourth is, does it eliminate inner conflict? The fifth is, does it to eliminate conflict with other people? Okay, so these are the five criteria that we need. Okay, let's now turn the page. Uh, and you have the, the, who's going to read the first one that is there? All right. I must be loved and approved by everyone. I think everyone. What's that word? Right? Practically. 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 Sorry, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah, that's no. Fine. Everyone, especially those who are most important to me. Okay, so is that rational or irrational? Right. Okay, what is the, so it is irrational. First of all, what is the first principle of debating? Is this objective, is this true? So if it is not objective, not true, say why is it not true? Okay, first of all, let me see. How many of you would say 
that this is one of your principles in life, that you believe, you know, honestly, not like, you know, it's not the topmost, but you do believe, let's say, on a scale of one to 10, that you do believe, like maybe five to seven, that I must be loved by practically everyone. Okay, one, two, three, four, good. All right, so now, those of you who raised your hand, let's see how can we change that. So what are the irrational words? Must. must. The must. 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 The must. Wait, pardon? Must. Masturbation. Must. Masturbation, of yeah. course. Yes, masturbation, and we need to fight the bull. Like, you know. So the bull is that practically everyone is also not true. So, all right. So first of all, it's not objective. Two. Does it protect my life? No. It may not apply. It may not apply. Unless I kind of, you know, take this so seriously to say, if I don't get love, I'm going to kill somebody, or I'm going to kill myself, then you need help. Then it comes to life. But very often, very often, or I put myself in danger, where I'll either get killed or I'll kill somebody else. You know, either, like, you know, either physically, mentally, emotionally, that can be done in 10,000 different ways. All right? Okay, so, but generally, generally, this particular, this particular principle does not apply, <coughs> may not apply, okay, in most, in most situations. What's the third? The third is, does it get me my goal? So what is your goal in life? Like, you know, I must get the lo love of practically everyone. So what is your goal? What do you think would be the goal, your goal? Be loved. To be loved, okay, good, to be loved and to be peaceful, to be happy, and to be free. Got it? So I want to be peaceful, I want to be happy, I want to be free. And I also want to be loved. Okay? And I want, I desire, I desire to be loved by practically everyone. But it's neither possible nor necessary. Now if I say, everyone must love me, everyone must love me, is this going to get me my goal? To be loved by everybody? No. Okay? Does this kind of, uh, does it allow me to have my inner freedom? No. Okay? Now let's say, like practically everyone, supposing I say, I want, like, you know, I must get the love and approval of this one special person. Okay? Why? Right. And demanding is like, okay, you can get the person, chain the person, like, you know, bring that person like your puppy dog, are you going to get love? No. No. And if you get the love that, you, that you're demanding, what do you think is your self-worth? What, what does it work? It makes you feel like... Big brother? Like you forced the love. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't have a good feeling about yourself. Because you say, if I let this person go, then let you know, this person something me, and then every night you go to bed to say, like, I'm saying, but this is, this is not really giving me that inner freedom, inner peace, and I want love that comes, that is free, really. you know, that is like, a, that is mutual, that is, and it's like the butterfly, the more, the more you chase the butterfly, the further it runs away. You just kind of, you know, just enjoy the butterfly, it will land in you know, it like you you, you will you, you 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 have a better chance of like so so I must get the love and approval maybe like you know practically everyone we understand but what about one particular person? You know we are normally like crazy like I've seen like you know in my own life and I've seen people like you know who are it's crazy. You know I love you but you don't care about me. You love him and he doesn't care about you. He loves him and here I've got all these people who are craving for my love who will give me love at any time, but I know you, only you, and without you, I will die. Rubbish. That, that's why Hindi, uh, Hindi priests make that, uh, that uh, ah, astrology. The, the astrology thing. Yeah, I mean, that, like, yeah, you, go, you don't have to run, you just go, you know, you just <laughs> love attraction. look at the love attraction in the zodiac signs and the stars, <laughs> and then you'll find which is compatible and which is not. <laughs> no, we'll, we, so, but, <laughs> What I need to do is to look around and see there are so many people, supposing I want, I want love, okay? I want to be loved because, yeah, but I look around, 
if I, if, I, if I give up demanding love from you, I can get 10,000 times more love from everywhere around me. And then maybe I will kind of, you know, you know, today I saw on the internet, there was this, um, this guy who was poor, and, uh, and he fell in love with this girl who was like the daughter of a, of a, of a rich man. You know, and she said, "How much money do you make?" He said, "Well, I don't have money, but I love you." <laughs> so he, so she just dumped him. Now, about ten years later, they meet again, and he's still like you know the same. And so he says, so "How many?" How, he says, "How much money do you make?" He says, "I'm married with my husband, and he makes like so much money a month and so much money a year, and um, you know I'm just happy." And all of a sudden, husband comes onto the scene. And he says, oh, she, he, he tells, this, tells this guy whom she's talking to, you know, first he, he, he says, he says, honey, this is my boss. So that poor guy whom she dumped 10 years before is now the boss of the man whom she's married. <laughs> and he's making millions of dollars because he owns this company now. <clears throat> and he's all, and the, and the husband is telling the wife, he says, you know, he, he was in love with a girl long ago, about 10 years ago, and she didn't marry him because he was poor, and he never married her because he still loves her. And uh, of course, this is a fairy tale. I don't think it happens in real life. Maybe it does, who knows? <laughs> but, it's like, but I'm saying there are reasons why people may not love you, but that sometimes is an opportunity to make yourself available to you know, who knows what? Like, do you want to be rich and unhappy? <coughs> Suppose it, <laughs> you know, they say sometimes, you know, women never marry for money, but, but they don't know how else to get it. You know, sometimes, <laughs> or, or men for that matter, sometimes don't marry for money, but they don't know how else to get it. So you kind of, you know, you find somebody. No, so would you be, supposing I tell you, you know, you're gonna be, I've got this, you're gonna be very happy. Uh, but you'll probably be sick the rest of your life. What would you choose? Choose healthy. Very bad. Healthy. Choose healthy. Choose healthy. So you'll be healthy and unhappy. Yeah, that's a that's that's a difficult choice, you know. So I'd say you would be happy, like you know, extremely happy but you'll probably be sick all your life. What would you choose? You would be extremely happy, but you'll be poor. You won't have all the luxuries of life. What would you choose? You'll be extremely happy, but maybe you'll be alone the rest of your life. What would you choose? I'm not saying, I'm not saying like, you know, it would be better to have money and be happy, right? Yes, it'd be better to have somebody to love and be happy, it would be better to have like you know everything and be happy, but if there's a choice between the two, what would you choose? I personally would choose to be happy and be poor, to be happy and be alone, to be happy and with no recognition, but I've got my inner peace and my in my inner happiness. And like yeah. And by the way, nobody can make me happy. Okay. And you can only make me aware of my happiness, you don't make me happy, and you don't make me sad. That's my choice. Okay. All right. So that's the first one. So I need to kind of, I need to debate that. So if that is one of your things, like work on it, work on it, work on it with your mind to say this is irrational. Okay, third, does it eliminate inner conflict? You know, the third thing is, does it, uh, no, the first is, uh, the fourth, does it eliminate inner conflict? I keep saying, I must be loved, I must be loved, I must be loved by this person. Do you think I'm at peace inside? No. There is like, there's turmoil. There's all these kind of things happening. Does it eliminate conflict with other people? Sometimes it does now. Because I want that person so much, you know. You remember that, uh, I don't know whether you remember the weatherman of Channel 4. He was so in love with this woman that he took his plane and was flying. Channel 5. Yeah. Channel 5. Channel 5, whatever that was. Yeah, you know. And then he went and killed himself. What? Yeah, that's good. That there was a man. Yeah. 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 Yeah, what a man. Yeah, but that's crazy. 
Would you be in love with someone that much that you would take your life? Yes, or take her life. Yeah. It's oh. like, you know, it's like, so, that is irrational. That is irrational. Okay? All right, let's read number two. Okay. Who's going to read number two? I'll read it. Okay. I must be perfectly competent, adequate, and successful before I can think of myself as worthwhile. Good. How many of you have think this is part of your, like, you know, that you must be perfect in, in everything? One. Okay, okay, on a scale of one to ten, how many of you feel that this is like three? Okay, all right, so I must be perfect. So what is, so this is, is this irrational? No, it's not irrational because the masturbation comes in there, the must is there, and that, so how would I debate this? So first of all, is this objective? No, it's not. Why is it not objective? Because it's not possible to be perfect and inadequate in everything. It's not necessary to be perfect in, and adequate in everything, you know, and that does not make me less worthwhile if I'm not perfect, okay? All right, so what's the alternative? So the alternative is, it is desirable to be perfect, and I don't, you know, one of the things about, about the American culture is, you know, we are number one, we are number one. You know, you play only to win. Losing is not an option. I was not brought up with that. I was brought up with play the game of life. Play the best you can. Somebody wins, somebody loses. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. What is important is, did you give your best? Did you give your best? But here, no. You know, I used to, when I was a Jesuit, the fellows would come back from the Billikens game. They would go and see St. Louis play. And, or the Cardinals play. And I would come back, and, and when they came back, I would ask them this question, you know, uh, how was the game? All right, so if I asked you that question, you went for the game, which games, like, <coughs> which, did you go to any, have you watched any game recently? Cardinals. Cardinals, great. When, when, was, when the last time you watched? Last night. No, I ain't watched them last night. Okay. All right, you watched it last night. All right, how was the game? Great. Why? Huh? Great, we won. Great, we won. Right. <laughs> did he? Did he? Okay. What if they lost? Would it still be a great game? No. Now, do you think, can you see the irrationality and the stupidity and the insanity in this? No, no. This is, no. This is, this is what you call that. The priests would tell me the same. They would come back and I would say, how was the game? Oh, we won. I said, I didn't ask you that. I asked you, how was the game? Was it a good game and you won? Was it a good game and you lost? No. If we won, it was a good game. If we lost, it was not a good game. Now apply that in your personal life. Apply that in your personal life. You know, you go out on jobs. Sometimes you're great, sometimes you're not. What is the important question to ask yourself? Try your best. Did I try my best? You know. Did I do my best? And if I did my best, yep. And it was good, wonderful. If I did my best and it was not so good, it's still wonderful. So it's not an excuse, you know, it's not an excuse, but it's just a lack of life. Got it? Okay, let's take number three. I have no control over my happiness. My happiness is completely under the control of external circumstances. Okay, so I have no control over my happiness. My happiness is entirely under the control of external circumstances and until I'm under the control of other people. What do you think about that? Is that rational? Is big button? Yes. So it is, is it objective? Is it true? It is not. Okay? Why is it not objective? Why is it not true? What do you think? Because your happiness is not based on someone else's uh, acceptance of you. You control your own happiness. Right. If and only that were true. <laughs> I mean, if we could learn that, how much better life would be. Oh, yeah. We are learning. We are learning. The first thing is to recognize it. The first thing is to take a look at it. And you're not going to learn it today. 
because you've got to read this about 25 times before you say, shit, I need to change. <laughs> because you practiced this for the last 25 years. You know, now can you change in a minute? What do you think? No. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. you can. Okay. Yes, you can. If you want to. And you gotta know how. Big button? And you gotta know how. And you gotta know how. But if you want to, you'll find the how. See, I suffered from a deep, deep inferiority complex and a very poor self-image. Very poor. And I did crazy things that you won't believe. I mean, I didn't beat up people, but I killed them with my tongue. Oh, I destroyed people with my tongue. You know, because I'm smart. I knew exactly how to kill, how to hurt another person just by saying something sarcastically, flippantly, and especially in, the, in public with somebody again. Yeah, that was, that was evil. Okay, he's, he's looking at me, guys. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I wasn't. You, you missed the first two hours. I did, not, I did not look at you. I'd like, you know, like if there's a guilty conscience. <laughs> but I was the shoe fit somewhere in it. Okay. All right. So, how I got cured because I was miserable. I was miserable. I had no friends. I had no one who loved me for myself. They all loved me for what they could get from me. Because I was talented, I was gifted, I could do all kinds of things. They loved me for, but not for me. Not for me. Okay? You know what? I would go to pray in the church every This was the saddest prayer you could ever hear. I would pray, I would say, God, take away all my gifts, all my talents, everything that I have, and give me just one person who will love me for myself. And I used to cry. I used to cry, praying for this one person who could love me for myself. Okay? All right. Then, one day, I, I have had enough and enough, enough of rejection, of like lack of love, nobody to love me, etc. I went to this friend of mine and I said, you know my problem, I know my problem, help me. And he gave me my mantra. What was my mantra? I'm important, precious, and beautiful. Important, precious, beautiful. Important, precious, beautiful. Now, I'm important, precious, and beautiful, not because I'm saying this, but because God has made me important. God hasn't created junk. God has made me into God's own image and likeness. I'm the divine. You know, that's who I am. I'm precious. Because the Bible tells me, Isaiah 43, you are precious in my eyes and I love you. So God says I'm precious. I'm beautiful. I've got something beautiful to offer. What you can get from me, you cannot get from anybody else. So I would go like, you know, five minutes, change my life. I began saying this like a madman, a hundred times, a thousand times a day, important, precious, beautiful, important, precious, beautiful, important, precious, beautiful. Now, in the beginning when I said it, there were times I'm saying, who am I talking about? Me? So oh, look at me. You know, I couldn't comb my hair. I had like the right side parting, left side, center parting, no parting, my hair looked miserable. I looked at my nose and I thought I had such a big nose that it covered my whole face. I looked at my eyes and I thought I had the eyes of a ghost, you know, the deep eyes. I felt ugly. But I still kept on saying, important, precious, beautiful, important, precious, beautiful. And slowly, people began listening to my inside, like a little child or an animal. What was my inside before that? I'm worthless. I'm good for nothing. Unless I do something, nobody will love me. You know, people love me for who I am, for what I do, not who I am. I was telling them, telling them that. But now that I began to say, important, precious, and beautiful, other people began <coughs> to hear that, listen to that, and started treating me as someone who was important, precious, and beautiful. And the more they treated me, every time somebody treated me, I gave myself a pat on the back to say, important, precious, beautiful, important, precious, beautiful. Today I have friends in different parts of the world. I don't lack love and I don't lack friendships. Why? Because I don't crave for them. Five minutes, my friend, I walk from here to there, but I want to. Because at that stage of my life, I was crying. I was broken. I was, it was as if a, a, a steamroller had gone over me, you know, and enough was enough. I said, no, nope, I want to change. And I got my mantra, important, precious, beautiful. Five minutes changed my life. 
started changing, it began to change. And then it, even today, it's still changing. <coughs> and I'm getting freer and much better and happier. Because I don't crave for love. And since I don't crave for that love, I get it from everywhere. Even from you guys. You know, you don't have to be my intimate, close, only buddy. No. Your little appreciation, your kind of, you know, your kindness and what we have over here. I'm happy. I go back and I'm saying, thank you, God. You know, this group made me feel important, precious, and beautiful. And if somebody criticizes me and hates me and says something nasty or discriminates, now I feel sorry for them. Why? Because they're missing somebody who's important, precious, and beautiful. I feel sorry for them. Before, if somebody rejected me, I should feel sorry for myself. Now I feel sorry for them. Because they are missing someone that is unique. You know? And that's not being proud. That's not that's the fact. We all need one another. And if we discriminate against somebody and leave out somebody, we are leaving out a part of ourselves, you know, from that. From, from, from that. Okay? So can we change in five minutes? Yes, sir. Okay? If you want to, you make the choice to say enough is enough. I'll give you another example. There was a, there was this politician friend of mine back in India. And when he was he was like a small time politician. He was like one of these big. But you know, like politicians <coughs> in different parts of the world, many of them, if not most of them, are corrupt. The, they are not corrupt, the job corrupts them. The job corrupts them. You know, they start, you, you need money, you get lobbyists, you get all these people, and once money comes, then you're beholden to them, then you're enslaved to the other person. Okay? So with the money and with, and, the, and he told me, he says, you know, they all promise you money, but the money never comes. What do they send instead? Beautiful women. You know, they give you women to be able to, you know, flatter your ego, your male ego. And now you're a politician, you've got power. So you start sleeping around with, you know, all kinds of people. You know, you're having affairs. Your wife is at home and your children are at home, but you're the politician. You've got all this thing that is like, oh. And you know, so people started what he called that. There were rumors about him having an affair. He, you think he cared? No. He was blind. He was blind. Until one day, he had a dream. And in his dream, he told me, he dreamt that his daughter had become a prostitute. He says, I got up in a sweat, in a sweat. I jumped out of my bed, I knelt down five minutes. He changed his life. He said, enough is enough. So then he went to his wife and told his wife about everything that he was doing. Asked for her pardon, told her about his dream. You know, and as if his wife didn't know, women know. Because women are intuitive. They may not know who, but they know They know that it, it has happened. You know, women know. We men are idiots. idiots. <laughs> we, yeah. And we think that men and women, like, you can fool a woman. No, you cannot fool a woman. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. Because they are intuitive and they, they, and they know. So it's kind of, you know. So we need to be able to, can you change? So this politician, now he kind of you know he gave up he did not give up politics but he's a different kind of a politician because now he's working for values five minutes my friend that dream like shook him up and said you know those who kind of who smoke all of a sudden you get a heart attack <laughs> you don't need more than five minutes to give up smoking if you want to live and if you've got the reason to live you know, your wife, your children, your friends, and yourself, if you want to live, yes, five minutes you can. So the myth about saying, oh, I practiced this for 25 years, now I need another 25 years to change, that's bullshit. That's an excuse. That's an excuse to say, tomorrow, tomorrow, you know, that it never happens. You say, now, enough is enough. I'm going to kind of make a difference now, you know. And, you know, kind of, you know, and this is, you don't listen to this, okay. but this is for men with balls. You don't have balls, you have no place here. You know, if you want to change, you got to be a man. you got to be a man. So don't say, I don't know, I cannot, I, like, no, that's like, 
you're not a man. There's something that they're complete with, you know. Excuses, or like, you know, my past, external circumstances, my past. The past is gone. It's influencing you, yes sir. It is influencing you, yes. Does it have to control you? No. Does it have to determine your future? No. You need to take your life in your hands and make of it what you want to make of your hands. Five minutes, you can make that decision and change. Okay, at least begin to change. Begin to change, begin to change, begin to change, and you will change. So external circumstances may influence you, they do not control you and determine your life. External other people can influence you, they cannot control you and determine your life. That is your choice. That is your choice. Okay? Alright, next number. What? The influences of my past cannot be directed. Right. So what I just said, you know, like the influences of my past life it is like like one of my students, I told you, told me, you know, I just want you to know I'm like this because my father was an alcoholic. What did I tell him? Do you remember? I was mean to him. I told him, your father probably started drinking after you were born. <laughs> so don't use, so my other students said, do oh, mean. I said, I hope he remembers that and you remember that. Don't make your past, my parents, my father, my mother, my childhood, my, you know, my, my circumstances, my thing, you know, just understand. Yes, I understand, but I don't accept it. I understand, but you can change. So the past influences my present, but it cannot control my present and determine my future. But it can influence the people that have around you also. So you're talking about just personal. My right. past can influence, can influence Joe, could influence the effect of my job. It can influence my court case because it's a judge case. It, I mean, just, you're just talking personally, really. but it, it can, it does. There's a lot more pressures and influences that it, your past has than just your emotional being. Yes. I can change yes. today, but my past still have control over me. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, let's see if I'm listening to you, okay? So it can have control over you, maybe influence the judge and influence other people in making decisions about you. Correct. Okay, good. But they have no power on how it will affect you. On how it affects me? Yeah. But it has the power over the future. Yes. Yes. There is power over the future from the past. On, not on your happiness. Me. Not on your inner happiness. Right, that happiness. But it, it doesn't. It does. Good. I'm glad you brought this up. So it may affect you in the kinds of jobs that you may get. Correct. It may affect you in the kinds of relationships that you might have. But for a little while, if you allow that to affect you, that will become a permanent situation. Because sooner or later, like I came from like, you know, from a poor family that was also like, you know, just put down and put down or you'll never do anything good. You know, look at us and we, you know, we got the money, we got the wealth. So now as like, you know, as Providence would have it and like, you know, as we moved from that place to another place because my father got a tra like, you know, transfer, my siblings continued to keep relationships with those people and they're still suffering. The effects of that are still there. I think, I think what he was saying is more or less your past or your circumstances can allow other people into your life or affects your circumstances yeah. and can control your external situation, external yeah. circumstances. Exactly. Like they will not hire you. Or the legal, like system, you the legal have, system. Wait, pardon? The legal yeah. system. The legal system, the political system, the religious system, yeah. you know, will control you at the outside. You know, like if you've got a criminal record, like many people will not hire you, right? Yeah. That's controlling you, uh -huh. but controlling your outside. And I get that. I'm glad you brought that. They can't control your out. They can break your body, but they cannot touch your spirit. Which is okay. For example, okay. I've got assaults from before my children were born. My kids are 10 and 11. I've got court. They're bringing up stuff before my children are born to prove that I'm a bad parent. Right. Taking my children from me, that affects me emotionally. 
yeah. period. And you can't, and how you look at it, no matter what, taking my children from me, that's me. Yeah. Uh, that's deep. That's a, that's a tough situation. Yeah. It is. It is, it is a very tough situation. It is a very personal situation. It's like, you know, it's almost like, you know, say, you know, like raping my mother in front of me and like, you know, and I'm helpless. Does it affect me? Yes. They're taking your children away from you. You know, yes, it will affect you. Uh, now, here's the thing. You feel the pain, you know, you feel the pain. But try to see, like, you know, okay, what's the gift in this? Because on the other hand, I'm not saying just sit and do nothing. You know, what to do. This is Oh, I can do the prototypes. I can do all that. But no, and in the meantime, you're doing everything that you can. You know, getting a good lawyer, you're trying all of this, and, you know, still, no, still nothing happens. Still no. Yeah, so you're still helpless. So now you've got to say, okay, you know, I feel the pain. Now, what is the gift in this pain? Now, first of all, it is real. And let me only act rationally, you know, to say I will do everything in my power to be right. You rational. just said something I didn't understand. Your life lived since that point. Someone should be able to speak on and represent that, right? And Absolutely, but it's it's cool. still going to affect the decision. Any person, any person is going to be affected by things that they hear. You can't unhear what you've heard. So yes. once you say, okay, this, 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 you already have predisposition to think about somebody a certain way. Now you got to prove yourself. So my here's my thing. If they hold my kids against me, okay, goods or bads. Good, I can focus on myself and growing up. Bad, my kids are in a bad situation. Right. Okay, it's just, it's all bad. I, I changed. If I would have still been a violent, evil person, right. she never would have had the, the, the canolas right. to take my kids from me. Right. But, but since I have become softer and more, more loving, that gave, I mean, they take an advantage of that, right. that way. Because if I, was, if I was as evil and as mean as she thought I was, she wouldn't take my kids. She'd be a coward in her corner. So what, 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 do, what do you all guys think about presidency? No, like, I, I mean, I, I, I get, I, no, I, I get it and I don't because I'm not from you. Know, like, you know, I, I can understand it, like, you know, like, uh, but emotionally, I, I guess I do and I don't. And well, what I see out of it, like I said, man, what he said, he's, he's, he's grown up. He's not that round person over. He's not that, he's, Gone about beyond that. It's too much and he supported his kids, right? I think it's the most important thing a man should do with his kids is support them. You know, but I've been growing up, like I said, not being violent, not being that change in his way of his past. Okay. Anybody else? That's good. But I would see it also as you know, while he's in in the courtroom or whatever and they make their decision and he lashes out, they're not gonna take that. They'll only prove. That they're, yeah, that he's uh, right. He's right, yeah. That he's provided perfectly. But if he doesn't do anything, he doesn't really care. Uh, so, are you in a catch 22 right. situation? Well, if you, if you think about it this way, is what I would say to you. The reason she brings this up is because she knows that will hurt you. That'll get you angry. Right. I'll exactly. get you angry. Right. It, uh, they take my kids away. I'm, I'm gonna. I feel the pain. So that 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 you touch you, um, and that's with anybody. That whatever that pain is, when you're in relationships, in a marriage, you have so much that you know about each other. You said before that she knows. So she knows what hurts. She knows your buttons, as you yeah. said before. But if you allow her to let that affect you and say, okay, I'm going to be angry because I have this pain. I'm going to show that. Then she she wins. Right. She has some more buttons to push. So you, you know, and it's hard. I'm not in your situation. I'm, it's painful. Right, right. And there, but everybody has pain, you know. No, I, have, I haven't expressed the anger. I haven't been any self the things. The problem is, is with her bringing it up, you can't even hear what you hear. So whenever I have this judge, this person who does not know me, does not know her, has total control over my next move, 
my children's lives, and he hears that, he can't unhear that. Correct. When she says he's a he's a danger to my kids because he did this, 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 and this, my lawyer can say, yeah, but that was before the kids were born. Mm -hmm. But he still has that in his head. Correct. Yeah, but he has to be objective. He has to be objective. See, that's why they have judges. And, he has and, to hear both sides. Yeah, that's why they got judges the way that judges are now. Because, you know, the judge, he hears so much. So much to be brought to a judge. That's why the judge has to stay liberal. I can't take her side. I can't take his side. I got to stay focused on what's best for the kids. My, me, myself, only I can tell you is this. Go to court with open mind. Go to court. Leave. To, to the main judge that has to say so over all of them. And that's the man upstairs. These other judges, only they're doing is playing a role, but the man just take it to the man upstairs and let him deal with it. Well, and they, that's, that's what, that's, that's the whole well, way you can like do. about Jefferson County out there where he's going to? The judges are elected and voted in. They're not appointed out there. That's but there's I'm only saying. one judge that you need to take it to. But now I'm just saying that's this. Right. You know this is what I'm saying. Really, yeah. Yeah. Don't take it to the judges getting paid. Take it to the judge that's not making no money off of this at all. Yeah. And that's the man upstairs. Yeah, you right. can sit here and say whatever you want to say and do whatever you want to do. But there's only one person that has the last say so in everything. Yeah. Does the kids have an uh, advocate? Uh, I've applied for a guardian of life, but I haven't gotten it yet. That's the problem. I, 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 I think I, I have one, one thing. I don't know if it might be not apply to you, my but, uh I think it's like we learn the, the thing here. Yeah. If you more, she you know, it push you but It's more. Either way, you lose already. Yeah, you already lose. Why you have to? Why you have to fight and make yourself down, down, deeper, deeper. Just stand up. Even you, you have, you have, you have broken heart here, but just, you pretend like you are stronger. You're explaining one, one sentence, one text to my daughter. Why exactly? Why I have to fight? Why I have to do this? One text. I can't stand it here. She already said I look fat and that I should suck in my stomach. She's hurting my confidence. I can't help it. I look up to her. It's a ten year old girl. That's my ten year old daughter. That's why I fight. And Mike, that text, if the if the your lawyer, your judge say anything, I would show them that text. Then that way they uh they will question her. Why is your daughter feeling like Until this? Until she has her own lawyer, guardian of my own lawyer, I can't. Yeah. You can't say it. That, that, that's why my point, Mike. If you, if you, if, if you, if, if you throw all those whatever you feel towards her, it's, you already lose, and you gotta go lose more. If you get kept up stronger, you know, intimidate her. You are stronger. You do best you can for your kid. That around you or judge, they will see that you prove to judge that you are not that you like person. But if you don't, if, if, if you, if you are, you know, fight in, 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 in the irrational thing, that the judge will see them, oh, she's right. Keep so, okay, on. tell me one thing. When she sent you that email, that text, Sorry. how did you respond to her? How did I feel? How did, no, how did you respond to her? I didn't respond to her. I tried to call her. She was crying too much. I asked her to call my mother. I was working at the time. I, I, I was unable to reach out. Okay. What would you tell her? I told her she's beautiful I and mean, I love her. Yes. And you'll always be there for her. Mm -hmm. And that you will do everything you can. Well, she knows this. Yeah. Yes. But it matters. Matters. But still hard to me to have it does. someone to yes. Oh, sure. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and your the kids. All off. The same judge that is having control of my kids is the same judge that's doing your sentencing. Yeah. Cordon. Yes, sir. Mr. Yeah. Not many judges. Same there. judge. Who's, your, who's the judge? Cordon. What you got? How many judges out there? I said they're, they're voted in. They're not. They're not. Right. There's one guy that has control over a lot. And that's the you know that's that's the sad part that you know that one one man has that power yeah. to be able to right. you know to make or break. And that happens in like in a lot of life. That's you know, <clears throat> a lot of people. I had you know? I had a friend that had kids by a girl who lived down in Jefferson County, and he was saying that. Uh, she took him down there because she knew that the judge was going to allow her to keep the kids. And so he's like, well, man, I'm trying to get him to, for them to bring it back here to St. Louis County. 
I said, well, look, all you gotta do is just do what you gotta do. Well, make a long story short, they went to court. Um, the judge awarded him custody of the kid. And he's like, well, I, I'm not understanding this. She has a house, she's done this, and uh, everything was looking good for her. But I guess he had some people to go in and talk for him, for him to get the uh, custody of his kids. But now he's raising his kids and she's nowhere to be found. So it's not what, what the mom has or what was going on is it's up to the pretty much is up to the judge yeah. and he has a lot his back is worse than your back well i do know this that they do they do fight a lot for the kids anymore you know, i mean the kids is the first thing on their mind but they got to also get the story straight so they have to make the judges are really putting out the spot yeah because they've got to get the, the, the true story of what's going on so they're going to do what they can to protect the kids yeah that's the last thing you want to do is bring a kid into the courtroom and they, they want to get it settled before any kid even comes to the court. They don't want to go that far. That same judge awarded me my kids. And then and their mom had nothing to do with it because she's all total, you know, legally. But I mean, it's like, it's just. They're going to talk to the kids. They're going to talk to the kids. They're going to ask the kids, they're, they're yeah. the kids, they're ask the kids where, where do you want to be at? Where, where do you see yourself living with? Okay, now, you know what? We cannot make a judgment about like, what is going to happen with that. But we're talking about, like, you know, how can you handle this whole situation? Yeah. And I think some of the things that you've been talking about has been very healthy, very good, and very kind of, you know, it's like you've got to have your integrity. You've got to keep <clears throat> your cool. You've got to kind of debate by them. I was going to say you also prepare yourself for the worst. You prepare, you, you know, you prepare to hope for the best, prepare yourself for the worst. Like, like you also, like, you know, what, what your assessor was saying, like, you know, keep, a, keep an open mind about whatever will happen. But whatever will happen may not be like what you expect to happen right now, okay? But you will always be there for your kids, no matter what. And maybe sometimes, like very often what happens is, the time passes, few years pass, and you know, everything kind of seems, because you haven't reacted. You have been, you're, it, and it, it's not easy. You know, it's easy for me to sit here and to kind of, you know, and, 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 to, and to talk about this. But when you're in that situation, I mean, especially when, you, when somebody that is so dear to you is kind of is taken away from you, oh my God, that's painful. And you as a man, it's so painful. For a woman, it's even worse. Yeah. Because of, you know, it's like I control. Control. Yes. 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 That's it. yes. I like to be in control. <coughs> but then well, you, yeah. Then you might have said, even if, if worst case scenario, you don't get the kids, but you still get to see them, you, you keep your cool. You want this by growing up yourself, by handling yourself like a real man should. Going yeah. and taking care of your business. And not exploding. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Handle it like a real man should. Hey, Mike. And every chance that he gets, he should reinforce, I love you. Yeah. Because yeah. kids yeah. have, they, they yeah. always yeah. feel right. that there's yeah. a cause of. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. 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 No, I'm serious. You are handle like a man. Like you should. That's yeah, but you, you see, you handle it like a man, but you also respond like a woman. You know, in the sense that you you have to reinforce the fact. See your your kids know your kids. Okay, by the way. You gotta aggravate him now. No joking. No, that's the way. But you got to have that thing about like you know, because your kids need to know now, but need to continue to know that that you love them no matter what. Yeah. Like, you know, even if they don't see you, they'll still remember you as somebody who really loves and who really cares. And, and like, then you would do anything and everything to be able to, and you know, reach out. Oh. And the no mic starts seeing things their own way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they'll make their own decisions. They can only live with And they will remember those times when you could have and you didn't have and the things that were said and were. And it's not easy because, you know, your, your insides is crying for that, you know, I'll do anything, I'll kill myself, you know, for my kids. But no, if you kill yourself, you're not going to get your kids. If you react, like, you know, you'll still be, you won't get your kids. And yeah. like you got all the support with all of these people here saying, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. lessen the pain. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't lessen the pain. You but wind up with all of them, Mike, though. You probably wind up with all your kids, man, because when I was, when I went through a divorce. Yes. The outcome is, is, if I knew it now, I could, I could play But you can control yourself, and that's what you're doing well. And the moral of the thing was, guys, hit the past, wild past, kind of be influenced all against them right now. Right now. But it does not have to continue forever, because this may be the turning points for the rest of your life. You know? 
No, for, for external circumstances also. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, people will say, you know, okay, we've seen this guy. Yeah. We've seen the change. You know, there is somebody that is like, you know, that is different. So, and this is like, you know, it was almost like, you know, like the, the previous Pope, you know, he said, oh, Islam, you know, is like a, a religion of violence and it promotes violence. And that was a catch-22. So, if the Muslims said, oh, we'll show you, like, you know, we're going to react. Ah, they said, see, I told you it was violence. <laughs> But sometimes it is like, you know, like, see, and here's the thing, not to, like, anger is a sign of weakness, reaction is a sign of weakness. Sometimes you're calm. It's not like, you know, you don't care. Everybody knows how much you care because that's why you're in the court, in the court over there. Everybody knows that. But you care enough and you don't react because you're strong. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's strong. What was the thing he said? You got a like a man like that, like a woman? What did you say before? What did he say? What did he say? He said you got to act like a man, but respond like a woman. Respond like a woman. It's a battle. It's a battle. It's a very strong You can stay with the guy that you don't know. That's the most painful for you. That's what happened to me. You, 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 you never think that what that guy is gonna do to my kid. All the time. This is what this is what happened to me when I had my my parents the ex wife. You know, she married some guy and my kid stayed there and my kid that guy tried to control my kid and almost that guy almost shoot me because of, I I jump out of him. You have two things. One thing you said, okay, if I didn't do nothing, that seems like I'm a witness, I'm not a fit father. But if you jump up so high, it seems like I'm ridiculous here. You have two things here as we bother the rest of your life. I mean, not the rest of your life, at that moment that you try to get the kids. And that's like uh, uh, what Paul said about you. That's going to eat you. But you have to control yourself. Good. And, yeah, and keep talking to people. Yeah. You never know who would come to help come to help you. Yeah. You know. Keep it in, ain't don't work. No, no. Wait, brother. Keep it inside. No. 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 I think you should just get over in the van, come Tuesday and just go to court with Mike. Uh, <laughs> we already show up there? Yeah, we already show up there. <laughs> oh no, you well, guys. Let's see. <laughs> Because this guy who have gone, mm -hmm. okay, he married the, the guy who had gone. He was we not wet man. And one day, when I pick up my kid, my wife, my ex-wife wasn't there. But he stayed to pick up my, my kid. After I pick up my kid, my wife, my, my wife and my third wife took me and my another kid. So I pick up my kid and we she go, you know, get in the car and he throw about half block and come back. Come back. He back up. And they asked me, when you gonna bring her? This is what take me. When you gonna bring her? If he said, her mom wanna know when you're gonna bring her. That's different stuff. But he said, when you gonna bring her? That's take me out. You are not you 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 she's not my your kid. You don't have no control. Me. I'll control my kid. That's why we and him we fight. I start <coughs> And my wife was pulling me, I don't know why that guy shot me, because I go over there and punch him. And he stayed inside the truck. Well, they say it's a, it's a little thing to your job. I mean, what could you start? I was in St. Louis County Jail. I was, in, I was a cellmate at Kenneth Bomrock, the guy who shot up the St. Louis County Courthouse and all that. I got real close to him for like eight months. He, he talked to me, he said, the reason he shot the courthouse is he, he'd walk, he was working every so electric. his wife got the house, the car, everything. When he started shooting up the uh, courtroom, Yes, for the dog. That's when we lost it. Mm -hmm. So we shot all the bailiffs, 
lawyers everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, 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 yeah.
Okay. Here's, let, let me, I'm going to skip all the other ones so you have an idea of how to do that. Now, after having done B, you know, so we debate and we write, like, you know, we do the alternatives. We keep debating, we keep debating, debating those <coughs> principles to change our minds. Then we write an alternative. So what is really a true statement and what is objective and that will help you. Then you have E. What is so we have A, B, C, D, and the last <coughs> thing that we have to learn is E. E is emotions, desired, and future situations. Like how do I want to feel in a future A? Supposing this thing happens to me again, how do I want to feel? You know, supposing like, I don't know, like let me see, um, I cannot think about any, like, um, Okay, um, let's say I'm doing a presentation. Yes, thank you, sir. Eat one more time. Multiple okay, words. E is emotions desired in a future A. Emotions desired in a future A. And what is A? The activating event. So, how do I want to feel in a future situation? Okay, let's say, like, you know, say, I mean, this is a stupid thing that's kind of humane. It doesn't even make sense to anybody. But I've got an interview coming up, and this interview is for a job. And I like, you know, and uh, maybe in the past interviews, I was a mess because I was so nervous, I said the wrong thing, and I kind of, you know, I feel that I was. Now I've got this, so I've done this debate of all the irrational things that, and now I got, now I'm, I want to, I want this future. Now I've got this interview coming up. Now how do I want to feel at that interview? I'm not talking about the outcome of the interview. I want, I'm deciding about how do I want, like in the, in the next court date. How do I want to feel when I come there? You know, I've got to choose. So I've got, I want to feel, if I'm at an interview, I want to feel calm, I want to feel confident, you know, and I want to feel good. The outcome, whether it is, it works to, in my favor or it doesn't work in my favor, I'm still going to feel good, calm and confident. You know, because I've got no control over the outcome. But, very often, if I am calm, confident, and cool, the outcome may be in my favor. You know, maybe, or maybe not. So I don't kind of, you know, tie my happiness onto the outcome. You know, I would like pain, yes, but my, I can still continue. So, when I go to the interview, I'm already feeling calm, confident, and, uh, or let's say, in a relationship. You know, before, I couldn't keep any relationship because what was I saying to myself? I'm worthless, I'm ugly, I'm not attractive, I'm like, you know, I'm all these, I'm good for nothing. Now I say, important, precious, beautiful. Important, precious, beautiful. And I say to myself, if you love me, lucky you. If you don't, poor you. You're going to miss somebody that is important, precious, and beautiful. Okay? So now, in, in the beginning, people don't change because they still think you're the old guy. But after some time, they hear important, precious, and beautiful. You know, and they begin to treat you differently. So I have changed, but my, what Michael said is true. External circumstances may take time to change, but if but I can change right away, and then slowly I can change. You know, external circumstances. Okay, future A, future E. Now, if I want this calm, confident, and you know, and I want to feel good, then I've got to say good things, confident things, and you know. So that I can feel. Remember, B causes C. So if I want to feel good, I got to think good and positive and positive and realistically. You know, like I said, I cannot go up on the top of the roof and say, "I can fly, I can fly." I'm positive. No, you'll die. So you got to kind of think positively and rationally. You know, like to say, "This is what I'm going to." All right. So that is E. Now here's the best part. Here's the best part, right? And here's the thing, before you even go to court or I go to the interview, let me fantasize the whole situation. So in fantasy, I'm already preparing myself. I can see my wife saying, lawyer, saying all kinds of nasty things. And I see myself as calm, confident. I can look at him, but I can look at him without, without being angry. Or I don't have to make eye contact and think about my kids. And I'm going to be calm for them. I'm going to be good for them. 
I'm going to be, so I see myself already, even though it's painful inside, I feel the pain, but I can still feel I'm going to be calm and I'm going to be confident in that. You know, because of a, of a so pr practice this in fantasy, practice this in fantasy, because that which we practice in fantasy will become a reality when we are in the actual situation. So if I'm preparing for an interview, which is kind of a ridiculous thing, like you're not, it doesn't compare with this at all, okay? I fantasize the interview and I fantasize the way I'm feeling. So I imagine myself getting into uh, this room, or like if I'm giving a talk to like 2,000 people, I always like to go ahead and just look at it, go out there to the podium before anybody comes, and just look around and feel confident, feel good, and guess what? I mean, I, I come on top because I prepared myself. But what happens is very often unconsciously, in our fantasy, we're already preparing a negative situation. I'm already feeling, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. And you will. You know, I'm going to see, like, you know, these people are going to be nasty and I'm going to kind of react and then, no. And I'm going to say, and keep your thoughts and your words positive. I want to be calm. Don't say, I don't want to be afraid. No, then what? I don't want to be afraid. What is the focus on? Afraid. afraid. And you will be afraid. But if you say, I want to be courageous, I want to be calm, I want to be confident, I want to be loving for the sake of my kids. And one of the things, like, you know, the like also says, said, like, you know, it's also to trust in life, to trust in the higher power. And the higher power in life may not always give us what we want. You know, but you'll get it. When, we, when, when, when the time comes, there is, and this is, not a, this is not an excuse to say like, you know, yeah, I'm just kind of rationalizing, but we don't know. So I will continue to be loving, I will continue to be kind, you know, as long as I can, for the sake of my kids and for the sake of myself. Easier said than done. So the E is emotions and future situations. And then you have the REI. The REI is rational emotive imagery. Rational emotive imagery is... Oh, no, I was afraid. Yes, right. Okay. So rational emotive imagery is to fantasize a future situation before you even get to it. Like when you're coming to work here sometimes, sometimes in your fantasy, you're already saying, oh, today's going to be a hopeless day. And what do you think happened? Hopeless things happened. If you say, well, I'm open to, like, you know, whatever happens, I think it's going to be a good day. And I say, it's going to be good. Like when I was coming here, I'm saying, I'm going to have a good time. Or whatever it is, it's going to be good. <laughs> that was my kind of, you know, but when I, whenever I go somewhere, not always, not always. Sometimes the negative thing in me overtakes something like, you know, like you know, I'm down, and like, you know, it's not going to work out. And it doesn't. It does something that somebody says or does kind of, you know, like, like hooks me and I've lost. But, it, but I fantasize. I fantasize a positive, good thing and it works out. It works out. But if it doesn't work out, I still keep my calm, I still keep my peace and my freedom. Okay? Will it be painful? Yes. But will it be, will it take away my freedom and inner, 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 this, uh, inner happiness? No. Okay, so once again, I still say <clears throat> easier said but than done, you know, but it's possible. <coughs> it's possible. It's possible. Okay, all right. So it's about 2 o'clock. Any questions that you might have? <clears throat> what if we use the accident? Because for 30 minutes, I really thought when I got to the place they were gone for 30 minutes. I really thought there was a chance Tanner was really far gone because when I talked to Laos, it was all that noise in the background. And then upon seeing you, it was like just a relief, like oh my God, they're alive. I mean, I you know I I know my these these last uh, six days have been really strange. Because I know when you called me at 3.30 in the morning or whatever time yeah. it was, and you said uh, Tanner was serious, I thought it was really was serious. Because the way I thought uh, Laos was saying was like he lost his eye or something. 
and then had more than that, I thought, who knows, the broken bones, you know. And because I kept asking the, the authorities there, they kept saying, like, I'm sorry, we're not allowed to discuss this with you. Like, oh my God, there's been horrible news, and they don't tell me. What about you, Laos, and Dan? How did you process this from the shock and stuff? This is six days later. Well, using uh, his ideas, how did you go through this? Well, I go through like he like he, he been teach here. Uh, one thing that uh, Caesar was debating me another day, and he said that uh, why you have to go to work? Why don't you act like you sick? Because the how the island God said you don't know. Thief, do not cheat in the people. You know, there's <laughs> nothing no, 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 wrong with you. You do what you have to do. No, 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 no. Let's just rephrase this. I didn't say act like you sick. I said, why did you go to work immediately after that? Anybody else would have took a couple days off and just just relax. Okay, so there's a difference between. <laughs> well, he didn't say pretend. Yeah, that, that, that could have been my fault, but I okay. asked him if he wanted to do that job. He said he would do that job the next day with me. I didn't make it. I was always No, I would have said the same thing. I would have said, you know, if you're in an action right away, you need a little time off before you, like, you know, but I would just say, like, if he said, you know, I said, why don't you pretend? No, then there is something wrong with that, but I don't think that's what he said. He said, you, since you're sick, but since you were in this accident, why do you have to go into, but you know what, yeah, so, but you overcame that by just saying. Yeah, because I, I feel like I'm nothing wrong with you now. Right. But I think I have to do it. Right. If I, if I feel I'm, I'm sick, then I will deal with that on. Right. That's what I feel. But they have to mess you up your well, well, it's, it's a choice. It's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a choice. choice. Yeah. How much I, you're going to do I don't have, 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 have emotions. Emotionally control me. I control you. You don't have emotions. Yes, he does. Yeah. No, he don't. Oh, don't, don't, don't push it. He shows, he shows emotions. <laughs> Thank you. I offered to drive his wife to work that day. No, no, I will stay here and take care of her life. I said, come on, I'll take it work. You don't have to worry. Then, okay, do what you want. My wife don't work. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me, let me, I don't know. This is the happened accident, okay? I do not know that Tanya was, was uh, paying attention or not. But to me, because I'm driving. I saw the guy come in on the left lane. And I saw him. I told, I told Tanya, I said, what the hell is this guy doing here? And I was sit like, a, you know, yeah. and he, he tortured me. And all of you like you snap you your eye and you close your eye one minute. One minute it's dark. And the boom of the boom, the light. All light come off. Like a like a like an all bright light come off. Even I can see everything in the truck. You know? And after that, that's why I, mean, I, I I still control my car and go to, to the side of my way. And after that and I asked him and I said, oh. and then I check myself if, you know, I'm I'm okay or I'm not, I'm broken bone or all the rest things. Then I asked him what's going on. He said, "All he said, he said, my eyes." It's a good thing you're so short. You could, you could have been tall. You got your head blown up. <laughs> <laughs> Tanner, tell your thing. You felt moisture. You felt oh, yeah. like blood. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Dirty, wet, dirty matting or whatever. But once we hit, I felt a bunch of moisture come up, hit me, and I was so afraid to look to my left and shit. I don't know if anybody. I don't know. I was so afraid to look. To my left. You want to see layoffs laying over there? <laughs> <laughs> no, that happens so, you know, when, uh, I, when I know because I was there. Now, this part I can understand. Again, I don't know how you feel, but when I was there, it was the same thing. You have no time to think. It all of a sudden happens. But, but, five minutes, I could change. I made a decision. Five minutes, I said, I'm not going to let this take away my inner peace, my inner freedom. I'm okay, I'm a little bruised, the other guy's okay, the car's gone. I kind of went and apologized for the car, and I also thanked the car for having given its life to save my life. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You know, it's like, I mean, it didn't, I'm like, in about a minute, the other car was coming, I didn't know how to try to avoid it, and it went, you know. So, and then, but then, I've had no flashbacks, and I'm not repressing it, I'm not denying it. No flashbacks, no lack of sleep, you know, I slept, 
and I drive with no difficulty. Now, I have a question because when we visited Tanner in the hospital on Friday night, your immediate reaction was that I should not have shown him those pictures. Yes. And I think when Tanner and I talked about Saturday, Laos, we were kind of feeling liberated, like, wow, this is a great thing. So you see My thing was just the timing. I'm not saying that he did not have to see the pictures, but that was not for, uh, for me. But, you know, but I'm not like I'm not I'm not the two of you. How did you feel looking back on it now? Me? No, for Hannah. Did Hannah. you feel that was bad for you or I, I I mean I didn't feel it was bad, I felt like looking at it like <clears throat> You walked away from that. Yeah, right. It was like More amazing. Like, I don't know. Like I said, I, when, I, when we had the impact I didn't really feel like I felt like I should have had more of it, more of a injury. injury. Yeah. How quick before you guys got out of the vehicle? Um, about three minutes. Let's we'll see. We'll see. We'll, Leos can open his door, and I can open my door for a second. So I had to kind of take it like that. So your door was not open. I thought the way it was, it was like ripped off. But you had to put yeah, it together. Yeah, open this. That's 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 the other miracle. It was on his side, right. all two or part, a rip off. Right. But his door is still open. But mine is completely not untouchable. Yeah. Cannot jam it out. Can right. I call out the microphone? Right. What I couldn't understand, but that's what I was showing you, because again, this is no sleep, blah, blah, blah. When I saw that stuff and I said, two humans existed in this space. Yeah. And it's like. Yeah. No, so my thing is, I'm like, you know, all that is perfect, all that is fine. <clears throat> I would have done it at a different time without doing it. Like, you know, while you're in the hospital and you've got all these other things going on, I don't, I personally would not have done it at that point. I would have kind of brought it back later to say, you know, now that you've kind of overcome this, I'd just like to tell you what, you know, what went on, and here's the thing. You know, so then we can look at it, and I can look at it now more rationally, because I'm not in the hospital with those tubes and the darkness, and I'm not sure what is going to happen next. So I look at that and I'm saying, like, you know, well, maybe I'll never get out of here. You know, maybe there's something else not wrong. Who knows? <coughs> Either of you think you could have done anything before this? Not really. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Had they been five minutes later or earlier, it probably wouldn't have happened on anything. It's like, how can you control that? Yeah, that thing is. I'll show you. Can I the next way right. I don't know, I pay attention to everything. I know. <laughs> well, and right now, it was the airbag throwing your phone in yeah. your face. That yeah, was, was like, I said, detect right. <laughs> Those darn airbags hurt so many people. Yeah. yeah. They all just say right. No, I'm saying you guys, really. Oh, what a blessing. Well, yes. I think it was yes. all that much for me, baby. <laughs> well, we, all we, all we, all we were out of the, from, from from the car and we were out of the car. <laughs> Before that, I said good things, but I put my phone in here because I yeah. have headset here. The when I have accident, that, that my phone is it just fly out from my pocket, and it's good they still lay on the side uh -huh. that I can't see. You know, I mean, it's after like I said, after the light, I see. And you did and call me, so you're still in the game. Yeah. The best <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't gotten a call so What happened to the other guy? Though? Yeah, what happened uh, to the other guy? guy? I don't think we know yet. Yeah, we don't know it. Yeah, our yeah, our yeah, police told us that he he messed up pretty bad, right? That's what police told us. I think so. Well, so when we get the police report, we don't know. And then there's investigation, and then there's there's more stuff, and then you got privacy stuff. Yeah. If this technically was a suicide of that. They will put a clamp over this. It may be a while till we know. Well, yeah, so, so so right? yeah, I checked twice. I couldn't find any skin marks. Right, right. no skin marks. Okay, one last thing I'll say, and I'm going to irony on this. Uh, this is for all of us, you know. It is not helpful to think about what could have happened, what would have happened, if only, like, you know, if that, that's not rational. That's not rational. Deal with the facts. This has happened. Here's what is like you know the result is. How do I want to deal with this? But if you think about what could or what would have, 
it will drive all of us crazy. Yes. And that's an epic situation. Yeah, I, I believe or not, I, I have to keep this guy so good. Yeah. I, 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 I still pray for him after I, I've got his, uh, I, I told him. I said, we don't know what he's doing. Only God knows what he's doing. Right. He's probably on the drug. We don't know. He's probably on med medication. Yeah. Overdose him. Right. Nobody knows. Right. 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 Maybe it's not all of his fault. You know, right. Nobody knows. Only God knows what he's doing. All right, guys. So it was. The, I enjoyed these four times that we go together. Thank you very much. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, okay, where's that record? Right? Oh, well, we don't have to get to your house now. Well, you come pick me up. <laughs> come on, we got to wrap some stuff up here. I was going to give Everett the authority on fitting the new van. Now, here's the problem. We've got to figure out what to do with that heat on the thing. My suggestion was this procedure would be that this thing would be actually lifted out. Yeah. We would not be putting all that heat. It's a brand new van. Well, so no. here we go. We, we we'll burn up all the wires on. Let's think this through. Yeah. Yeah. Like I did on the oh, let, let's start with Everett and then we'll talk. We got the uh, pipe <coughs> from the other machines, right? Is it still in the truck or they got burnt up? All, 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 all. Okay. No, what I'm saying is whatever we need to do needs to be foolproof. Because if the fools aren't here, we'll hire a fool. I, we gotta think this thing through. Yeah, I, I think too. I don't know. I I, I support Chris. Let me take a in if 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 it's okay or not. <coughs> because I saw in the company they do it. I think the way the step the step in this step uh, the, the machine right now. That's the way I I want it. I think it's it's really safe. It's, it's no more. But yeah. But that I said I I I try to push out when I use. Just push it from out from the truck. Load in and load out. Uh, the only thing, the only thing, the only thing you can do is uh, you can build a some kind of track or put it out there, that roll it outside. But See, they make yeah. those. We found those three years ago. It's a bed that does and rolls out. We found them. Those are they're about eleven, twelve hundred bucks. Those are many. Do we need to have a heat that does that stuff the way it does? Is there any other alternative? No, you so see you how beautiful the van is. How quick before somebody says, "Oh, I didn't follow, and the whole thing's on fire, and we burned all the wires, and nothing works again." Yeah, no, that's no. happened what three or four times. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm going to roll it out. I'm roll it out the van. But Mike was saying it's not enough. Up. Two people could roll it, put it on the ground, and then put it back in. Joe, it's not that heavy. With those two aluminum uh, riding on or uh, ramps, mm -hmm. roll that machine right out. Yeah. Do your job, push it right back yeah, in. Yeah, that's what I got to do. I saw, another, I saw another company do that. But I'm saying, heck, do you know where to go buy them and price it all that? You can get them at Sam's. You can get them at uh, Sam's, or you can get them at uh, a If yeah, you're small, sure, but what I'm saying, small. don't tell him to do it. You go do it, and then we'll get it done. People have all kinds of ideas to tell other people what to do, and they find out what doesn't really work. Well, I've, got, I've got two that I used to put a ride in my pickup truck. Okay. I don't know if uh, two guys can handle that machine. It's pretty heavy, though. So, uh, that's your question. So when you say yes or no, they could or couldn't? That we could put it in and out of the van. Do you that's think, the easiest thing I would think. Do you think, think it's not too heavy? Because you're going to have ice all over the ground. I got to use the thing and uh, hook it up and the crank thing up. Uh, we can do it. Can do it. Can do My thing is whatever we come up with that solves this problem, that's what we do for all of us. Within, within 18 months, all the vans will be the same. I just think you just need something that's going to bring it out, not put it out on the ground, but bring it out and just leave it up. It's just be because if. You need something that's going to be time-consuming. You know you take about six hours on the job anyway. And put that, lift that no, up. Now look at here. Van. Under this idea, if we have specialty equipment that we need at one job here, that would be here. All the vans would have the same stuff with a portable and a 
You see, if we occasionally need a kick-ass machine, that we would have that would be taken by trailer, another truck. We devote a truck that has that. That is my solution to this. We've got this that we can store that you sign it out and it comes back in. Occasionally. But I would like to have a consistent thing, five, six bands that have the same equipment, all interchangeable, all parts with a backup. That's the idea since 2007. And we just keep running around in circles. You know, we keep getting this or that. And, you know, somewhere we've got to figure out what we're doing to this to make it happen. That's why, I, that's why I'm thinking when I go to the wedding. But what I'm saying is, never, how much time do you personally have emotional energy to devote to this project? <laughs> this is Thursday at 2.15. We'd like, like, I could probably get that sign put on tomorrow on the van. They call to look. My thing is that, Ken, if you drive me, I will take the rental back unless somebody thinks we need the rental. Because it's so much trouble to clean, we'll just take it back. It's just done as an emergency. Then I will take that up to there, show them, and then if they will take the van tomorrow and put the signage on tomorrow, great. If they want to stall on us, oh well. But meanwhile, JB, yes, sir. you'll get the plywood part, like sir. we talked about. That'll get us started. Yes, and, then, and we got straps and stuff we got to do. The two straps there on those machines, I owe back to being off that we borrowed. So we take that back to them. <laughs> Jeff and I are going to go at 11 o'clock um, Saturday, and they're going to let us buy 10 cents on the dollar, anything we salvage. So that little unit we pulled, we're going to pay them like 50 bucks or something. You know, we get our little unit back. So they're going to count that. Because we're out 14000 right now as we start. So they're going to try to let us, whatever else we can get. So if we can get that other big machine out there, I did the big for a couple of hundred bucks. We'll probably get the sizzle out of the rest of this. Right. Well, right. we won't know. You and I will. I figure an hour, we'll figure it out. I'm going to look up front and grab the magnets. Any the magnets. Have you seen up front? Have you seen the front? Did you see the picture of up front? That shit is bad. Is Does, it anybody, it? Does anybody else have any more business? <laughs> But you can get the match. Where's the power? Joe. Everything is solid. Joe. Joe. Wait, I'm trying to hear him. What, what time can we go over there? What? What time can I take you over there? What time right now? Oh, okay. immediately. Good. Because I got to Jeffrey. Jeffrey. There he is. Thank you, sir. Now, we're going to get this we're going to make a Paul Pacino movie library that's lending. Like these movies he's got. We've got Invictus and stuff in there. Steve? Got an old check from a month ago. Where's Steve? He's got a mic. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Cecil, you, you look good with that here. Sprinkle some rice in. Mike, Mike, Mike. Jarrell. Mike. 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 Thank you. Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Originally one, you said, we're going to go. Tanner. A miracle. Now, when they called you a miracle in Walgreens, you heard it. That was Tell surreal. Me. Give me a time. Tom. Right here, too. <laughs> Danny? All right, did you check into this? What time? Playoffs? Playoffs. I'll find out soon. I'm going to go there in a half an hour. See what they say. They have made the month. Oh, look at this guy. Great. troublemaker. So that's the wall. Yeah. He said give it to me. JV? I got two or two for Really? Thank you. We'll try to figure out how to get it all back. I got a check. Procedure is I give you a commission. You're all for Oh, for that. Oh, for that. Oh, for that. Oh, 
Bye. Bye.